Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you aware and informed on everything that's happening in the world of faith and family films. Now, a few years ago, I'm not even sure how many, but a few years ago, I saw a movie that, in my opinion, was the best end time movie I'd ever seen, and to date, it still is. Uh, in fact, I showed it to several pastors right here in this screening room that you see behind me, uh, and they all were just, I mean, they're already, they're pastors, they're already saved, but it looked like they wanted to just recommit again because they wanted to make sure not to stay here and be the remaining. So anyway, I'm excited because I have the, uh, the co-writer of, of that film on my show today. Chris Dowling is a screenwriter and film director. He wrote the screenplay for the film Priceless, which released in 2016, and directed Run the Race, which released in 2019. He, of course, is the co-writer, as I mentioned, of the movie, my favorite all-time movie, The Remaining. Now, Dowling was born in, uh, I hope I say this right, Flowood, Mississippi, and grew up in Dallas, Texas. After graduating from the University of Texas with a degree in radio, television, and film, he moved to Los Angeles in 2009. Now, I'm not sure, but I think he's back in Texas, so we're going to have to uh, get confirmation on that today. Chris, welcome to Faith on Film. Thank you for having me, Isaac. And um, I think we need to get you a remaining poster back there. I'm not uh, seeing one. That I know, is, man. That is true. I, I am a, a huge fan, of course, of the Kendrick brothers and have been, have had a, my hands a little bit in their movies all the way back from, uh, well, actually all the way back from their very first one, Flywheel. So, of course, they always send me their, their uh, posters and I've put them in here. But you're going to have to send me a remaining one so that I can uh, put it up there, at least in my new place. I am moving to Texas, too, so I'll have to set up something there and put your poster, all right? Yeah, we will. I'll hand it to you because I'm out here in Texas, so I will hand it off to you, Isaac. So it is confirmed you're back in Texas then. Yeehaw, baby. <laughs> well, listen, uh, on Faith on Film, one of the first things we like to do is find out about my guest, find out who you are, how you got started in filmmaking. So you got five minutes to give us your entire life story. Wow, the spiel, huh? Um, okay. Um, I mean, the easiest uh, kind of Cliff Notes version is um, always wanted to do something in the creative space. Mm -hmm. And then I went to University of Texas um, and I was, um, I was doing some screenwriting classes. And then funny enough, my best friend moved out to L.A., became a, to act, crushed it, is one of those guys that never stopped working. And now it's 23 years later and he's still destroying it, although he moved back to Texas, too. But he can destroy it from Texas because he's, he's been doing it like that. Um, and, um, and so, man, I went out to L.A. Uh, I did some acting, did a little bit of soap opera work. I was Chaz for a little bit on Days of Our Lives, um, uh, the Chaz the Party Boy. And um, and then uh and then I, you know, and then I realized I really wanted to get, you know, get behind the screen and be writing, and that was more of my interest. And so, um, you know, did a short film. I was very fortunate to actually um, create a reality show uh, in 2010 that ran for 40 episodes on Spike called Repo Games, oh. which is a whole other story in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and that kind of gave me a little a little money at least to um, pursue the screenwriting, you know, and take some chances and do some spec scripts and. Um, and that's actually when the remaining um, was kind of uh, Rich Peluso had brought that to me to help fix and, and, and put my twist on it. Um, I was actually in, in the process of uh, running a reality show. And then that kind of quickly got me there. And then I did a movie called Where Hope Grows, which I'm extremely proud of. And, uh, you know, the, the Hollywood Reporter said it was the first American film with the down with the lead actor with Down syndrome. Wow. Um, and I could go on days about that movie, but um, yeah, man. And then from there, then I got priceless. They had seen that and they called me. So I got to work with for King and country on that, which was really awesome. And um, I don't know, man, it's just like they all start to blur together. Got to do a couple amazing documentaries. Uh, we did one called Asperger's or Us with my best friend that's on Netflix. And then we were fortunate to work with the Duplass brothers and then do um, a uh, docu series called Asperger's or Us on tour with Asperger's or Us that uh, HBO bought. And um, yeah, man, and sprinkled in a couple other ones along the way. Got to work with Tim Tebow on Run the Race, which was really cool. And um, and now there's some other things that are, you know, in the works and happening and just released um, a movie with Nick Searcy, The Man from Nowhere, which, um, I, you know, I got to, we'll get into that, but I mean, just a very, very cool way that thing came together. Um, and we shot it in eight days, which again is one to me, one of the biggest feats uh, yeah. ever uh, <laughs> for a feature film. Um, but uh, anyway, so I mean, that's that's kind of the, the quickest gist of it. I mean, it was like once I knew where I wanted to be and what I wanted to do, um, you know, and it's a process, right? Like, I mean, I, I say all that, but that's like a 20 year gap of living in L.A. where it was, you know, working through it and doing it. And and now finally, I'm in the spot where uh, I'm very fortunate where I'm having incoming calls through my management and stuff and mm -hmm. able to, you know, pick and choose the stuff I want to work on. 
Now, I noticed that you've done several things with uh, basically special needs, uh, you know, as, as sort of the, the background of that. Is there a reason that you've kind of focused a little bit on special needs? Uh, you know, it's funny. Um, when I wrote Where Hope Grows, I really had no, um, I had no end with special needs. I didn't know anyone with special needs. And, um, and in fact, I mean, even meeting David DeSanctis, the uh, individual with Down syndrome who plays the lead, like it was actually embarrassing. The first time I sat down with him, I, I, when we were doing that movie, my wife goes, you got to go sit down. You got to learn everything about Down syndrome and you got to do this and got to talk to you. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to meet the guy and talk to him like a dude. And if that uh -huh. doesn't work, then I'll go backtrack and figure it all out. So I got there. I sat down. It was the first day we were going to do a, um, just a quick read through of the script. And we, it was him and I, we sat down and then I got the script. I was about to hand it to him. And I realized I have no idea if this guy can read. I just don't know. I don't know. And so I slid it over to him and I'm like, I said, man, I am so sorry, but can you read this? And he, he looked at me and with so much flair that he has, he licked his thumb and goes, oh, Dowling, I already know it. And he just started opening <laughs> And dude, he he's he had memorized almost all of it already, and it was oh, amazing. And and that I think that set me up for my expectations of like the the expectations that I would put on people in the special uh -huh. needs community and how I probably box them in, and then unpacking all of that, and getting to know David, who I'm very close with. We still text almost every day, and and now I have a real heart for that. I got involved with the special okay. needs ministry at my church. I've been doing things with other special needs communities, and um, and yeah, now it's like. I don't know. That, that will always have a special place in my heart, that movie. Right. And it was really cool to to give a voice to, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, an underserved community, especially in the church, yeah. that, um, that felt like they didn't have a voice. And I was, you know, it was like, it was really cool when one day I was talking to a mom and she said that, um, that, that her kid and some other kids with Down syndrome went as produce, the main character from the movie, on Halloween. They, they got, they dressed up like produce and wore an apron and, and that was their Halloween costume because that was their hero. And oh, wow. I thought that was, man, that really hit me. That was like, that's really cool. And um, so, yeah, so then the, that it just, and the, the Asperger's totally 100% different and the movie feels different. I mean, it's a documentary, but it's, you know, it's a coming of age movie more than anything. Yeah. I think the I think the idea with those is like, it, it's not the movie about Down syndrome or it's not the movie mm -hmm. about Asperger's. It's about, it's a good movie where they just happen to have, a character happens to have Down syndrome. So we right. get to see that worldview. It's a good coming of age movie where some of the characters happen to have Asperger's. So it's like, we see their okay. worldview, you know, I think that's the difference. I think, I think that speaks with faith movies as well as how we should right. be presenting faith movies. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about that movie that you, that you just finished that is supposed to release, uh, the, or that released like a few weeks ago, February, what was it? February, February 9th, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, February we'll talk 9th. about that. So folks, don't go away. We're going to be right back. Hello, I'm Mike Vendell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented MyPillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow, and to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to mypillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Welcome back to Faith on Film. We are here with Chris Dowling today, co-writer of my favorite end time movie. Uh, but listen, Chris, uh, you mentioned a, a story that was a bit embarrassing for you, maybe, uh, you know, with, uh, with the Down syndrome young man. I have an embarrassing story that has, to, that has kind of a similar touch. So I met, uh, years ago, I met that, that, uh, that guy, I forget his name right now, but you know, he's the one that has no limbs, basically no arms and no legs. Uh, oh, Nick. Uh, yes, Nick. And uh, he was on the show that I was directing, and so I went down there to meet him. Um, and I mean, immediately they introduced me to him and immediately I went like this and then I just stopped and froze. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so yep. if, you, if you know Nick, you know how loving he is. He, he looks at me and he goes, dude, just hug me. 
<laughs> I did not know what to where. I mean, I just okay. didn't know where to hide myself. But so anyway, I I think that was even more embarrassing than your story. Yeah, you now, probably got me on that. <laughs> yeah, I win the prize for sticking my foot in my in my mouth, right? Well, anyway, um, so you've done a new movie now, and I did get to see the movie. Uh, and it, while it is geared towards men, I found it to be real heartwarming and heart touching. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to admit. I teared up. I cried, uh, especially towards the end. So, so it's not just it, it's not a movie for men. That's action and you know cars uh, crashing and all this. But it's a movie that really deals with uh, with something very important for men. Can you share a little bit about that with us? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's out. It's out now, um, and mm -hmm. you can get it on SVOD or um, you know uh, the Man from Nowhere Movie dot com. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it stars Nick Cersei. And it was actually really cool. Also, we did it um, in conjunction with uh, Matt, the Masters University. So. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of students that were learning along the way, which is amazing because we shot the entire feature in eight days. Um, and, um, and, I, and I give, I, I say I, I give all the credit to the director, Matt Green, fantastic, the crew, it looks beautiful, Jeff Henson, they all did great. Um, but we, you know, there's in the faith spectrum of, of you know, the films, the Kennedy brothers have, they do a nice job with like courageous and stuff, but there's not a lot of movies that are geared towards men in, right. in, this, in this genre. And, um, and especially movies where, yeah, like, you know, there's a lot of unpacking that a lot of guys have to do with their father and, and vice versa. And a lot of fathers needing to unpack that relationship with their son. And so, you know, we wanted to write a very contained story that was character driven that um, that you could just really start to, to to see the healing process and and in the in the window, the, the, the you know, the window of not waiting till it's too late to start that healing process. And um and it's been powerful. We've seen in the screenings, you know, a lot of grown men crying and come and talk to us. And, uh, and so I think that's really important. And, um, you know, and we did, it's, it, it's also, I feel like a movie that uh, is unlike anything else out there, the way that mm -hmm. it's set up with a, uh, you know, a B storyline that's actually film yes. noir and, um, and, you know, a detective story about a man looking for his son and, and how they intersect. And um, I think there's something real powerful, even in the movie where, you know, the son is having trouble connecting with his dad, but he somehow starts connecting with this detective mm -hmm. in this book who is you know, looking for his son. And it's easier. And I think for guys that a lot of times that is easier. It's like I can read a book and deal with my feelings or I can do, do with it over here, but I can't do it with you. Who the problem is with that or, yep. whoever, you know what I mean? So. Um, so, yeah. And we, you know, and, and for us, you know, there's also, you know, there's a workbook for it, for tools, for ministries and stuff. And. Um, and we also have been told, which um, really like that it, it's really landing on millennials just because of um, right. a because you know the actor is young in there too, and it just the feel of it because it you know it doesn't feel cheesy or anything. It feels like an independent film, mm -hmm. but also because you know it's where a lot of these guys are dealing with their dads right now. We're catching them in the right spot, so it's it's actually a pretty powerful tool for like youth groups and stuff um, and, and the boys in there to to deal with that. Um, so yeah, it's it's been great and. Um, you know, Nick was great to come on board, and um, and we're just we're just excited to see where it still goes. It's a little scary for me because this is the first movie I think I've ever done where I didn't have a, a studio behind us pushing it, mm -hmm. and um, and we just did this one ourselves, man. We edited it during quarantine, and um, we just decided we wanted to give it a shot and put it out on our own, and um, and so you know, here we go. Well, I do have to say that you know, since you mentioned that you shot it in eight days. Most people can get the idea that, oh, it must be one of those really low budget movies. I don't know what the budget was, and I know you did it in eight days, but I gotta tell you, it looks like a really well put together high end movie, if you will. And one thing that I liked about yeah. it is that even though it's a, it, it is a Christian movie or a faith based movie, I don't even know anymore why we tend to use those terms, but uh, it does have a Christian worldview. But as you mentioned, it's not cheesy. I can attest to that. It was just a great movie that anybody can see. Uh, and I did love that whole film noir thing. I mean, the, the going back into the, the days of the mafia, let's say, and bringing in that that sense of violence without it becoming a graphic violence. I mean, it, it just was amazing uh, what, what you guys did with that. And again, I, I got you. totally caught up into it. And yes, I did. I did tear up. There was a, a strong emotional uh, emotional sense to it. Can you tell us again how people can watch it? Or yeah, you were going to say something? Well, I was going to say, um, you know, you, you, you teared up, which I love, but hopefully you laughed a little bit along the way as well. Oh, I, tried, did. And I think Nick did a good job <laughs> inserting some humor in there and there you know, was, finding the, the moments to give it. Some there, there was the, I got afraid a few times, you know, when, when you see some of that, those scene is like, oh, what's going to happen. So there, there was I just kind of ran the gamut of emotions, you know, and but that was nice to see in a film that 
as you mentioned, isn't cheesy and isn't geared towards that female audience, which most Christian movies, to be honest with you, tend to be. They, they're, they're there to grab that female audience because movies, and I've said this before on this show, movies, you, the way you used to recoup your financing on movies was you would sell DVDs. Where would they sell the DVDs for faith-based movies? Was in Christian bookstores. Who would go to Christian bookstores to buy those DVDs to bring into the family? The moms and the grandmas. And so everybody was sure. gearing the movies for them to like so they would bring home to the, to the family. Of course, the boys and the dads so the, uh, and, the, and the, the dads would probably be like, oh, not another one of those. But this one really does get away from that. So I think you guys did a marvelous job. I'll tell you what. Oh, yeah, so I was asking you, how, how again can people watch this movie? Uh, yeah, like um, Amazon and, and, you know, places where you do the SVOD on the streaming sites. Um, and then, um, and then you know, you can go look for uh, the DVD or the, mm -hmm. um, the book at themanfromnowheremovie.com or manfromnowheremovie.com. Man. I don't know where the, but like you, man from nowhere movie .com, so. <laughs> Um, so anyways, um, but yeah, so, you know, we're again, excited, excited to see the lives is touching and, and just the reactions we're getting. It's, it's pretty awesome. Terrific. Well, listen, we're going to take another break and then we'll come back. We're going to talk a little bit about maybe what's in your future. I'm sure you've got some plans already of what to do next. So folks, don't go away. We're going to be right back. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. I tried every pillow out there and nothing worked. 15 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I back my pillow with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I really like the fact that it was made in the USA. I think that USA products are a better quality product. I've tried a lot of other pillows and nothing's worked like my pillow. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. For a limited time, you get premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, and that's the lowest price in history. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The Go Anywhere pillow is so easy to just roll up and take anywhere I want to go. The My Pillow Topper, for the first time, has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the My Pillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. When I got My Pillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. My Pillow helps me get a good night's sleep so I can do my job in the morning. Go to MyPillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. For example, you can get my premium MyPillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Welcome back to Faith on Film. We're here again with Chris Dowling, uh, just a wonderful screenwriter and director. I'm a huge fan of some of his movies that he's done. So, Chris, um, we've talked about the, the movies that you've done in the past. We've talked about the one that's just come out a few weeks ago. But I'm sure there must be something else there uh, already in your heart or in your head as to what you're uh, planning for the future. What's, what's up with, with Chris in the future? Yeah, um, a lot of cool stuff, man. Um, we've got, I've got a, a movie um, that there's going to be some news coming out on that, that was shot. It's a Dennis Quaid movie um, called um, On the Line. It's a true story. Um, it's a crazy true story, but um, but that one, there's news coming out. It'll be released here in the next quarter. Uh, I shot a movie with Shonda Pierce called Roll With It. Um, I'm a huge 80s fan, and I just I love the vibe of 80s movies, and like it's just basically irreverent, and you can just sit back and enjoy a movie, which... I think it's we're so hypercritical now and it's tougher um and so it's a great just kind of fun throwback movie uh it's karaoke we've got amazing songs in there got michael w smith singing uh freebird as a redneck uh trucker in that movie um and uh and it's a lot of fun um yeah we got great songs so also coming out um either somewhere between uh late spring early summer we're still working on the details for the distribution on that one um, and then uh, there's a couple projects right now that I'm, I'm currently writing, uh, two true stories that, um, I mean, I 
can those are those are happening which are cool but then there's one I'm all, another one that is a, the, the life story of little jimmy dickens who i don't know it's funny if you're outside of nashville a lot of people don't know him but in nashville he's like so revered and um in fact if you're walking the ryman auditorium on the outside there's like hank and i don't know Waylon jennings and maybe roy acuff and there's these statues and then you get to the front the box office and there's one statue and that's the little four foot eleven man jimmy dickens and so um he's got this really crazy love story with his wife uh, mona and uh, jimmy's no longer with us but um and it's basically it's their story and it's really cool and it, and it, it really gets into the um the, the grand old opry and that time period of country music in the late 60s into the early 70s mm -hmm. and um, and so I've been, um, I'm, I'm, I almost finished the first draft on that one. Um, very excited about that one. And, um, and then I'm supposed to be shooting a musical, um, in July in Nashville called undone that we haven't really announced yet, but, um, I don't know, I guess, I, I guess you I just did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so anyway, so we rewind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to shoot something called, yeah, yes. Uh, um, uh, anyways, um, so it's it's super busy, man, which is awesome. And my biggest fear from moving to, you know, Texas from California was like, you know, rise up. But um, I mean, I'm, I'm by far busier than I've ever been. Yeah. And, and there's stuff piling up waiting, you know, in the wings right now for other stuff, which um, is really exciting. Um, so yeah, man, so it's like, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm excited with what 2021 holds. I know it's a crazy time for, you know, a lot of people and my family's no different right now. Right. But um but, you know, I'm just I'm just holding out for hope and inspiration and that, right. you know, we as a as you know, as a, as a country, especially, but like just, man, we can find some some levity and just, you know, some way to move forward. And so I, I, I'm hopeful for 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, so am I. Believe me, I really am. Um, well, OK, so if people want to follow you, uh, you know, just write you, perhaps I, I always ask people to, to write uh, the, the, the folks that I have on. And sometimes even just to let you know that they're there behind you and they're praying for you, because I think that's very important. Um, how, how would they do that? Uh, website, email, what do you got? Social media? Um, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I'm, I, I'm terrible at uh, Instagram, but my little Instagram handle was, is Chris underscore Dowling underscore director. Okay. Um, and you can, someone could hit me on that. Um, again, I, I don't post that often, but um, eh, it's fun. And, um, and yeah. you can hit me up on Facebook or whatever. I'm pretty friendly. Um, so... Uh, that's probably the easiest way is, but, okay. um, but yeah, you know, and I'm looking forward to communicating with anybody and always happy to meet nice people. Yep. Yep. Uh, sometimes you might meet some not so nice people, but Hey, if they pray for you, that's okay. I'm, just, I'm not looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, uh, again, it was very exciting for me to have you on because you, uh, you know, you, you've again written one of my favorite end time movies and I want to, I want you guys to, I really want to recommend it. If you can find that, I'm sure you can find it on, uh, on Amazon and all kinds of places. The remaining, uh, it's not a movie that you want to see with your five-year-old kid, but if they're 12, <laughs> if they're 12 and over, no problem. It's a great, great movie. And of course this one, I really recommend that you watch it with your son or your dad uh, or your grandfather. In fact, all of you guys watch it. All you, all you grandpa, father, son, all of you watch it together. It's a very, very uh, very good movie. And yet, just because I teared up doesn't mean that it's one of those soft movies, by the way. It, it's not at all. It's just very emotional. So it definitely it has just some means really that you have a soft heart. Yeah, I, <laughs> Isaac, it just means that you have a soft heart. Not I, that the I, I do, I do. And I try to hide it sometimes, but I can't. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, I is who I is. Well, folks, hey, listen, thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time, Chris, to, to be with us. It looks like you got so much going on, but I appreciate you taking uh, these few moments to come and share with, with our viewers uh, yeah. uh, about what you're doing. And, uh, and again, viewers, uh, make sure and, and follow him and, and just let him know you're there. Show him, throw him a little message that says, hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm praying for you great work uh, all righty yeah. thank you so much chris thank you i, I folks, appreciate it brother you bet don't go away folks we're gonna be right back Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of my pillow. Just like you, I had problems sleeping. I tried every pillow out there and nothing worked. 15 years ago, I invented my pillow. It took me two years to develop because I wanted to have everything you would ever want in a pillow. I made sure that you could adjust my patented fill so you could have the exact support you need as an individual, regardless of your sleep position. I also wanted a pillow that would last, so I made my pillow machine washable and dryable. I back my pillow with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Not only that, I do all my own manufacturing in my home state of Minnesota. I really like the fact that it was made in the USA. I think that USA products are a better quality product. I've tried a lot of other pillows and nothing's worked like my pillow. 
I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow, and to thank you for your support, I'm gonna pass the savings directly on to you. For example, you get my six-piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. I used to think that sheets were just sheets. I got the Giza Dream sheets. They are the most comfortable sheets I've ever had. The Go Anywhere pillow is so easy to just roll up and take anywhere I want to go. Go Anywhere pillow is really comfortable, so that's what I really like. It's nice and supportive, and it's nice and small. The My Pillow Topper, for the first time, has enabled me to have a cool night's sleep. I'm able to go to bed and just get rest. That's three inches of wonderful that's in the MyPillow mattress topper. It's just like a firm cloud. MyPillow helps me get a good night's sleep so I can do my job in the morning. Go to MyPillow.com to get deep discounts, not just on my pillows, but so much more. For example, you get my six-piece towel sets, regular $109.99, now only $44.98. Or my pillow dog beds for as low as $19.99 with your promo code. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. A devotional filled with practical yet inspirational teachings and real-life experiences with real-world application which will encourage the reader. Order your copy today at Amazon.com or MotivatedByLove.org. Welcome back to Faith on Film. Thank you for tuning in to today's show. I highly recommend that you find and check out that movie, The Remaining. Watch it with your friends, with your family, with your neighbors. Just get out there and watch it. You won't regret it. Uh, and also, of course, uh, the movie that just recently came out, uh, the, uh, Man from Nowhere. Man from Nowhere. It's a great movie. Uh, and, I, and again, I recommend you watch it with your son, your grandson. Uh, just get out there and watch it, okay? And of course, Remember, I really want to hear from you, so write me at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Uh, you can always follow me also on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. And don't forget to check out Parables TV, a place where you can watch all sorts of great content, movies, documentaries, reality shows, children's shows, just a lot of great content for you and your family. All you have to do is go to parables.tv and register for free. That's parables.tv. Well, until next week, take care.